they trying to, yeah, so, okay. I'm going to go sit until Wendy tells me otherwise.
Well, good morning. good morning, and welcome everyone to worship. When I say to you, God is good, you say, God is good. and when I say all the time, you say, God is good. that's wonderful. God is good all the time. All the time. I am uh, overjoyed to be back with you. I'll be with you for about a month, a little over a month-ish, depending on how much stuff you have to throw at me uh, during <laughs> worship. Uh, and whether I can duck it or not, but uh, it is it is good to be here. For those who don't me know me, I am Pastor Tim Taylor. Yes, Tim Taylor is my real name. I had it first. Uh, glad to be here with you uh, this this morning, and looking forward to getting to know you all better. Couple of things to know for me: if you ask me to do something and you don't see me write it down. We never had the conversation. <laughs> you completely made that up. Uh, so, so just remember that if, if I'm supposed to do something for you, make sure you see me write it down somewhere so that, uh, so that I'll remember it. Um, we have a, a couple of things that are, that are going on. Uh, tonight we have a concert, right? Uh, who's going to say more about that? Am I going to say more about that? Uh, it's the, um, the Go Divas concert tonight at four. Tickets are available after church, but not at the door. So get your tickets uh, early. Uh, make sure that you can get into it uh, so that you're not at the door, buying at the door, and we're going, no, you're not coming in. No, go away, go away. Uh, uh, the feeding of the 5,000, we're going to do a blessing. How many people are participating in that that are here? Oh, great. Okay, so we'll do a blessing later in the service. I understand we still need volunteers for tomorrow morning. So see um, uh, Wendy or Susan uh, after, after worship today and make sure that uh, uh, if you can volunteer tomorrow morning. What time? Okay, order. 9 a.m. Okay, so that's what, that's what we, we still need for that. Uh, other announcements that I'm supposed to make and forgot. See, it's written down. Okay, groovy. Then um, seeing uh, no other announcements, uh, let's uh, uh, prepare ourselves for worship. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Oh, do we stand and sit here? Oh, okay. Then uh, I invite you to stand if you are able. So now let's do that again. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. understand we are live streaming right which is the camera that we're using both okay so those that are watching at home uh, we're glad that you joined us again welcome to everybody that is here I uh, understand that um, uh, there's been some confusing about the the worship leaders vesting uh, when they lead worship here but um, since I forgot to wear pants Wendy asked me to put this on this morning <laughs> So, uh, so as not to chase people out of worship on my first Sunday. So, <laughs> the, 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And now let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we hear the reading of God's word. Today's first reading is from Malachi. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. This is the word of God, the word of life. Today's second reading is from Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we work night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies not doing any work. Now such persons we command to exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. This is the word of God, the word of life. The Holy Gospel this morning comes to us from the Gospel of St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Where some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come will not one stone will be left upon another, all will be thrown down. They asked him, teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, beware that you, do not, that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not immediately follow. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes in various places, famines and plagues. There will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. They will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. For I will give you the words of wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. 
You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, uh, you, will be, you will gain your souls. This is the gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated, but that was some gospel, huh? Wow. God is good all the time. You know, some people um, live for stress. They crave it. They crave, they, and, and when it's not there, they, they create it. When, when none is there, they go and seek out way, things to be stressed out about because they have to have stress in order to survive. I know a guy, he absolutely positively has to have something to worry about, something for himself to worry about. Oh, I don't make enough money, he complained, until he got a raise. And now he goes, oh, now I make too much money and they're going to tax me heavily. It's like, come on, dude. Do you know folks like that? Every event in their lives is something that they can stress out about. Even things that seem positive, somehow they find a way to stress out about them. Now, my family was raised in the other direction. Not, I'm not saying we lived a stress-free life, but I'm saying, for the most part, uh, uh, our, our, our family motto was, stuff happens. My mom used to say, stuff happens, and then one day you wake up dead. Uh, you know? So, so when, when folks always wondered why I wasn't stressing over a potentially stressful situation, I would say, listen, there's no need to get worked up over it because when whatever happens, whatever is going to happen happens, you know, like I fail a test or I get embarrassed or I lose a job or we have a category five hurricane hit our area. The next day, the sun is still gonna come up and the sun is still gonna go down. And if it doesn't, then that thing wasn't such a big deal anyway. This is the advice that I have found myself giving several times post uh, Hurricane Ian. Okay, the sun is still gonna come up. The sun has still gone down. God is still in control, even though uh, uh, God did not ordain this uh, a weather event. God is still in control. God can use this uh, to make a way where many of us thought there was no way before. For some, uh, these couple of weeks had been reason to celebrate. There were jobs that were created because of this thing. For some, they've been a, a reason to weep and mourn. People have lost everything, including some of their dear friends. For some, these weeks have been a time to stand up and make your voices heard. Jesus, in that reading, told us about uh, the big scary signs. And right now we think we're in the midst of them. We're like, well, should we, uh, should we, what would you do? What should we do? Jesus says, don't miss the opportunity to speak. And more importantly, live out your faith. To spread the word that human-made things rise and human-made things fall. We witnessed that firsthand uh, years ago when we watched that 110-story uh, tall tower crumble in a matter of seconds. Some of us witnessed it firsthand with our homes or businesses were destroyed or wiped out by this storm. Governments, folks, will rise and governments will fall. And what seems now as if it may be a big and scary time, we're reminded that this is only temporary because in the end, in the end, the only thing still standing will be God himself. And on that day, it is only to God that we need to answer for the content of our lives. People sometimes ask me, they go, a uh, 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 pastor, is Hitler in heaven? 
I don't know. God stopped calling me, asking me who can get in. And why are you worried about that? What are you going to do if you get there and Hitler's there? What are you going to do, leave? <laughs> Worry about how you are living. Worry about whether that's a place that you were going to. Uh, uh, in these times, not to give up. Don't give up. We must keep believing. We must keep preaching. We must keep teaching. We must keep acting like we know how it is that God wants us to live. We're not to run away, not to become idle like the Thessalonians. We're to stand firm in the knowledge that all life and all time, past, present, and future, are in the hands of our loving God who will not let a hair on our heads be lost. In other words, Stuff happens. Don't get all caught up in it. Don't obsess over it. Don't lose your little mind running around like a chicken with his head cut off. Just relax and know that God is God and that God is in control. And God is going to take care of you. And whatever happens, whatever's going to happen, happens. The next day, the sun is still going to come up. S-O-N. And he will rise and claim you as his own as he promised that he would. So like Malachi, uh, look at what he said to Malachi. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and uh, evildoers will be like stubble. If you remember Habakkuk, Habakkuk says, how long, O Lord, must I cry out to you for help before you step in? And God said, look, I know what I'm doing. God said, I know what I'm doing. Your task is not to worry about what I'm doing, but pay attention to how you are living. God said to Habakkuk, he says, my words are sure and true, and they'll come at a time of my doing. And if it seems to tarry, what did he tell him? Wait for it. So calm down. Sit down. Take a chill pill. And just do what God told us to do. When we understand this, then we can understand God's promise. And then we can see God, uh, uh, God's bigger picture. And not just the flashy, dramatic signs, but the everyday signs. The signs of your neighbors around you. The signs of your neighbor stopping over to help you. The signs of, of your church uh, standing up uh, during the feeding of the 5,000. The, time, uh, uh, the times that we can show each other in the world what it means to be a child of God, the times that remind us to slow down and pay attention, pay attention to Lord Jesus in our midst, to act in love, even when the world seems to be dominated by hate. Jesus comes to us in the midst of our fear and our wonder about the end of time and calls out. He says, will you love the you you hide if I would call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found and reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you and me? Jesus is telling us, especially in these times, that we must not give up. We must keep believing. We must keep preaching. We must keep teaching. We must keep proclaiming the word of God and acting like we know. Why? Stuff happens, and stuff is going to happen every day. And our job is to be Christ-like to everyone we meet. Amen? Amen? And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
and choir. It's good to have a choir. You weren't here the last times I was here, so it's great to see you, to hear you. Great job. Thank you. Uh, worship continues as we say together uh, the words of the creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God and the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayers of intercession. Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to surround those affected by the recent hurricanes with your loving presence. Help them to feel the love of their community and to know that your strength is with them. We ask that you guide local, state, and federal leaders to clear paths to assistance for those in need. Comfort all who live in fear and sorrow and show and guide them with the light of your love. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Renewing God, as the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest and new life. Help us care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Loving God, Accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, health professionals, and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick, especially Jim, Val, Anne-Marie, Jennifer, Sean, Carol, Neil, Deanna, Judy, Kathy, Elaine, Trudy, Katie, Diane, JJ, Chris, Karen, Carol, Dave, Nancy, Tracy, Kathy, Michael, and Judy, Judy C, Judy S, Norm, Bev, Kendra, Pastor Becky and Gus, Charlotte and Wayne, Maureen and Rich, Jill and Sam, Al, Charlotte, Joyce, Braden, Tom, Rick, K, Rick, Ryan, Jeremy, Cindy, Marlene, Judy, Deanna, Jim, Steve, Sally, John, Sharon, Ed, Sarah, Karen, Harold, Elaine, Cal, Ken, and Matt. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Uniting God, Unite this assembly in its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel, especially the feeding of the 5,000 ministry. Highlight ways we can better work together and give us patience to work through disagreement. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Consoling God, abide with all who grieve for loved ones who have died, especially Velma Parham and Dale Katnak. Comfort us with the promise of your resurrection and new life in you. 
Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share God's peace with those who are gathered around you. I only see one little person. Does she want to come up for a children's message? No? Okay. I know, big scary man up there, right? Okay, so then in that case, I would like to invite uh, all of those that are participating in the Feeding of the 5,000 event to come forward. That's, that's, that's a different kind of event that's happening with the. <laughs> so uh, let's do a, 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 just a slight blessing for you all as you prepare to do this. We give you thanks, O God, for those who will labor at the feeding of the 5,000 event. We ask you to bless the fruits of their work. Grant us faith to know your gracious purpose in all things and continue your blessings to us through the bounty of your creation, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, again, we just ask that you add your blessing to these folks in the ministry that you have called them to do so that they can go forward knowing that they are continuing to do your work in our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may return to your seats. Thank you. Now we know that God feeds us with the presence of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know 
your care and prepare us now for the feast of bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Do we stand for this? Okay. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna and Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all of them to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins, do this for the remembrance of me. Now Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom and the glory and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As Jesus reminds us, uh, uh, Jesus paid much too high a price for us to pick and choose who can come. God's table is open to all. Uh, I hope you had a chance to pick up your communion kits as you were coming in. And now would be the time for us to open those. If you didn't get one, please let us know so we can make sure the ushers can get you one. Everybody seems ready. Come to the banquet for all is now ready. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Smart. 
I invite you uh, to rise for the blessing. And now, let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all of your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the blessing that sends us to the mission in this world. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Worship here has ended. Let the service in the world begin. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Have a good week, everyone. Namaste. This is my